When we last saw Selena, she was in Italy looking pretty good, but we still had to do a couple little things to her. And this topic is when you've got this far, you've got either one layer with a mask, or in our case, the two pieces that we did before, and we've got a mask, and we want to fine tune that mask. So there's a couple of aspects to this. Now, in this case, we have two layer masks, well, two layers, each of which has its own layer mask. So we kind of, that adds a little bit of complexity but I prefer to keep them separate like this just in case I need to do further tweaking. I don't want to really combine them yet until I know that they look the way that I want. So the one that's going to cause us the most challenge is the layer mask for her hair. So in order to view the layer mask, hold down Option or Alt and click once on the mask. Then we'll go a little bit closer and we can see what we've got. The cool part is it's got all these little hairs which look really good. Anywhere where you see gray that should be black. In other words, this black area means it's completely masked so we'll see through the background. So realistically, this area here should also be black. I don't really want there to be shades of gray in here. Down here, I'm not so worried about it because I know I have a separate layer that has the rest of her arm, but this gray around her hair, I don't really want. I mean, if it's a very, very light gray, like maybe over here, I wouldn't worry about it too, too much. But here's one of the best things ever invented. There are some areas, for example, in here where I'm seeing gray and I don't want gray there. I want to make sure it's white. So here's the greatest trick ever invented, and that is normally a paintbrush looks like this, right? It's in normal mode, 100% opacity, and you choose a nice soft edge brush around that big. And the problem is if I start painting with white, I'm going to press X to get white as my foreground color. It's great when I'm working inside somewhere, but if I slip, I've suddenly gone too far and ruined everything. Same thing applies to black. If I'm painting with black, I don't want to be, have to be so careful about staying within the lines. So here's a great, great trick. If you change the blend mode of the paintbrush to overlay, and I usually lower the opacity just at least a little bit, what this means is now when I'm painting with white, watch over here, it's going to only paint over the parts that are white and not touch the black parts. So that way I don't have to worry about kind of going outside the lines. It'll probably be easier to see here if I press the little X to swap to black. Look at that. I was able to paint right inside there and it looks like my paintbrush is going into the white but it doesn't matter because I've got this overlay mode turned on. So I could say I think maybe I do want a little more see through. Let's lower the opacity just a little bit more. And around this hair here I still want to get those fine little hairs. So I'm just kind of clicking a little bit to try and get rid of just a little bit of that gray. One of the things we've talked before about obsessing over things, I used to spend too much time in this layer mask view and then realize once again, I wasn't seeing it in the context of my background. Are you tired of hearing me say that yet? But that's really the reality. So I want to show you what overlay mode does, but here's how I'd actually use it. Make sure you're viewing the layer and then click on the mask. Now I can still paint in that mode but for example here remember I was starting to worry about is there too much gray there but frankly it looks pretty good to me and the same with her hair here it looks fine I don't think I have to worry about that her arm edge looks good so I would just do a quick check optional click on the layer mask just to make sure it didn't cut anything off completely and don't again worry about this one because remember we have this other one that we can look at I would probably come in here press X to get white and just make sure I didn't miss any part of her arm there and down here just a bit just to make sure I don't think I cut anything off there like that. Now if you're a keyboard shortcut kind of person I know I am because I like to work as quickly as possible here's a couple of shortcuts that you can use on the fly that are really useful when you're fine-tuning the mask by painting like this. So the first one I've already mentioned a couple times, letter X switches back and forth between black and white, which is very important because we want to be able to do that flip-flop when we're painting on the mask between either white or black. So rather than moving our mouse and clicking on anything, that's just easier. If you really like keyboard shortcuts, here's a couple that are really nice. When you're using the paintbrush and you want to change the opacity, right now my opacity is 45. Let's say I was painting down here and I want to jump to 70%. All I have to do is press 7. And that changes the opacity of my paintbrush to 70%. So it's really just the first letter, 8 for 80, 4 for 40, 5 for 50, and so on. Because we might want to switch between overlay and normal a lot, this one is pushing keyboard shortcuts a little bit. But just so you know, 
Option or Alt and the Shift key and then N is normal, O is overlay. So as I want to switch back and forth, I can really concentrate my attention on the painting on the mask part and not worry about going up and changing tool settings. So that's the first part I would consider. The other thing we can do, which is quite interesting, is go to, in CS6, it's the Properties panel. Before CS6, there was a panel called Masks. Now Masks is part of Properties. And if we come down here to where it says Mask Edge, this is almost, well, it really is giving you a second chance at Refine Edge. So the way it works is when you have a selection, you use Refine Edge. When you have a mask, you can go to Refine Mask. So it's giving me one more chance to go, what if I just tweak this a little further and try a bit more or shift the edge a little bit? So if you notice something at this point, this is really nice because it's giving you one more shot to try and tweak the results a little bit. So I would start off by painting on the layer mask, taking full advantage of that overlay mode to kind of fine tune a little bit and then look at that mask edge if you need to do any overall results. Now some people may be looking at this and going, but you still have two separate layers. Yes, I do. <laughs> and I, frankly, I'm okay with that because stop looking at the layers panel and look at the image. It looks fine. As long as I'm not seeing an obvious, oops, there's a cut between her head and her body, that looks fine to me. Ultimately, I'm going to save this as a PSD, which is my working layer document. And then I would save a copy in some merged flattened version like JPEG or something else to give to someone. But at least this way, I'm preserving both. And part of the reason is, again, Remember, two copies of the same smart object, I double click on either one, say maybe I just need to change the color temperature a little bit so she matches in a little better. We click OK, and it updates both of them while still preserving the layer mask.